folks, welcome to the shop. I'm playing my old 1890 JB Shaw banjo. I know I'm not old enough to have had it that long, uh, but I've had it 40 years or so. Uh, and I would love to know the stories this banjo could tell, the songs it's played over the years. And that one I was tempting to play right there, um, not so well. It's called the 8th of January, uh, and you might know it by a different tune, Battle of New Orleans, Johnny Horton's classic, The Battle of New Orleans. Johnny Horton took it to a country music number one and won a Grammy for The Battle of New Orleans, but he didn't write it. It was written by a fellow named Jimmy Driftwood, and Jimmy Driftwood is one of my personal heroes, and I'll tell you why in just a minute, but first of all, I want to tell you the story about how I know that song, and that's... Uh, because of a couple of other my personal heroes, which is Fred Miller and Bob Wright. They passed on now, but uh, they were my friends. And this that's my son, Daniel. That's me back in the town of Cumberland Gap, Cumberland Gap, Tennessee. It's a very historical area. You know, Daniel Boone was there and all kinds of stuff happened there in Cumberland Gap. And it's a national park. But they used to have reenactments there, Civil War reenactments. And they'd come in from both sides. You know, some of them dressed up like Confederates and some of them like uh, Union people. And um, and they'd, uh, they'd pretend like they was fighting during the day, and at night they'd have dances, and they hired us to come in and play at their dance. And, it, and the rules were that, you know, you couldn't play nothing that was any newer than 1863, and it, most stuff had to be older, and of course we couldn't use any kind of amplification either. And uh, and they would dance to it, and they knew all the dances. Uh, and they'd sometimes they'd have a caller, and... Uh, um, and so we, um, they, they hired us to come over there, me and Fred and, and Bob and Daniel. And, uh, and we did this several years and, and we had some other musicians along, uh, too. Uh, and so, so uh, I remember one day, uh, Fred was a fiddler, you know, and he, uh, well, I got some hat hair, don't I? But, uh, he, uh, he would call the tune. So he called 8th of January and I said, wait a minute, Fred, I don't know that song. Uh, and he go, oh, yeah, you do, yeah, you do, and he kicked it. Now, if you've ever played an old bedtime band, you know when somebody kicks a song, you got to go. You can't wait. Uh, and so, uh, so he kicked it in the key of D, which is traditional key for 8th of January, and, and they all started dancing right away. So, it, But fortunately, I remembered the song, and I didn't know it by the 8th of January. I knew it by the Battle of New Orleans, the Johnny Horton song. Uh, and the way I learned it was, you know, back in, uh, I, I told you about the Louthan family I used to stay with back when I was a young man. Um, and they had an old record player upstairs. They didn't have no running water uh, and didn't have no indoor plumbing, but they had a record player. And we listened to Sons of the Pioneers and Johnny Horton. And that's where I learned the Battle of New Orleans. So, um, so, uh, so he kicked it off and they got to doing a Virginia reel at back in Cumberland Gap when we were playing it there. And uh, so if you know a Virginia reel, it's a pretty long square dance. It takes a while, especially if you've got a whole lot of people. There's, you know, there's, there's a set way you're supposed to do it with a certain amount of couples, but they weren't going by that. What they were going by was let everybody dance, and they probably had 60 people in there, so 30 couples. Now, uh, Virginia reel, if you know it, you know, you, you first you go back and forth a few times, and then you do -si do a few times, and then you sashay up through the middle toward the band, and then you go back around. Uh, so... Um, it took probably 20 minutes to get everybody up there. So we were playing that song at a pretty fast pace and I was wore out and I couldn't have been so glad to see the last couple come up as anything. And here they come sashaying up there and the guy got up at the front and he was the leader of the whole thing. And he looked at me and he said, run them back again, boys. <laughs> So 40 minutes later, we finally finished playing the 8th of January. That was a long song, and we was wore out, so we took a break after that. Uh, but anyway, good memory. So Jimmy Driftwood, Jimmy Driftwood wrote the Battle of New Orleans to the tune of the 8th of January. The tune the 8th of January was first called Jackson's Victory. Um, but it changed names over the years. Jackson kind of fell out of favor. He was he he wasn't much of a president. He ended up you know he did all the Indian removals and all that, and um, and uh, he was responsible for a lot of atrocities. Anyway, the 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 folk music community removed his name somewhere along the line from that song, and it was no longer called Jackson's Victory, and it was then called 
8th of January, which was the date. The 8th of January, 1815, is when the Battle of New Orleans was fought. And it was a rout for the Americans. So, but incidentally, that's where one of the places where the Tennessee volunteers, because Tennessee volunteers, a lot of Tennessee people volunteered to go down there and fight in the War of 1812. And so you know the song. In 1814, we took a little trip along Colonel Jackson down the mighty Mississippi. We took a little bacon and we took a little beans and we fought the bloody British in the town of New Orleans. You know it. Uh, and uh, and so uh, in 1814 is when they went. 1815 is when the battle was. And uh, so January the 8th, 1815. It's January now. I thought it'd be fun to tell that story. Uh, so why Johnny, uh, not Johnny Horton, Jimmy Driftwood, my personal hero, well, he turned into environmentalist. Now he wrote wrote over 100 songs, including another hit song, he wrote Tennessee Stud. And that's a song about a horse. Um, and it's not a Tennessee walking horse because he rode that horse everywhere. And you don't ride Tennessee walking horses everywhere. You just show them. Uh, but you, but uh, he, the Tennessee Stud, you know, rode across Arkansas. Uh, and, uh, and there's a lot more to that story, too. But that was another big hit. Uh, and uh, and so he made some money off of those big hits, and he used his powers for good. He turned into an environmentalist. He was always an environmentalist. You always, it's not something you turn into. Um, and uh, did a lot of good work there in Arkansas, where he was from, uh, including the establishment of the very first national river. Like, not a national park, a national scenic river. And that's the Buffalo River in Arkansas. If you ever get a chance to go there, go. It's good fishing, and it's also, you know, good kayaking and um, and rafting, and it's just a really scenic area. Well, they were going to build a dam across it, just like they built dams off every uh, other uh, uh, river in the southeast and all over the country during that time, during the 1930s and 1940s, and, and he stopped it. He, and uh, so Jimmy Driftwood got up a group. They went to Washington, and they were very convincing, so convincing that it became the very first National Scenic River, the Buffalo River did. And then uh, Jimmy Driftwood went on to do a whole lot of other stuff, too, uh, good stuff in his life. Uh, and so hats off to him. Um, and, uh, uh, and and so uh, that's the story of the, uh, the Battle of New Orleans, the 8th of January. It's not the 8th of January right now, but it's close to it. So I thought it would be uh, appropriate to do that. We'll get back talking about fishing next time. Uh, so I hope you'll tune in. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. Uh, and your likes and shares are appreciated. Hey, send me some more questions. Uh, I'd love to uh, answer them uh, and, uh, in the series. So uh, so it, it looks like the wind is letting up a little bit out there. I'm hoping to go fishing tomorrow. We'll see you next time.